This is Sister C.J. Hammonds with Harvest Ministry. Harvest stands for Happy and Redeemed Vessels Enjoying Salvation Together. So glad that you are with us this morning. He is the reason why we are here. It's not anything that we have done, but because God has opened that door. Uh, had a little interview yesterday, so to speak, as far as the ministry growth and began to walk down memory lane as the questions were being asked of how uh, did I get to basically where I'm at today. They were interested in knowing how that I ended up down into street evangelism and the ministry and stuff. And so we went way back, way back. And so um, it was a wonderful experience as I began to uh, talk about how God has uh, led me and opened the doors and was really just able to be a testimony for what God has done. Uh, Just glad that He's um, walked with me through these years, through the ministry. Um, Started in one place and we just grew from there and and God opened those doors and that was one thing that I told that person that there was not one door that I had to knock on, not one phone call I had to make. God has always made the way and I am appreciative of that. I'm glad that I've never had to necessarily put myself out there. But God has made that way. And if I've ever needed anything, God has provided for it. Sure, there's been times I've stressed about things. Don't get me wrong. I'm human, and I walk just like you. But uh, it's just a wonderful testimony to have and to know that God uh, truly is the one uh, that has offered this ministry. And and that's what I told him. I said, all I had to do was just walk in it and do it. That's God. Amen. And I'm grateful for how God is led me through this. Grateful for you that's tuned in this morning. Hope to encourage your hearts and remind us of some things. Pray that the Holy Ghost will just give us the wisdom and the anointing that we need to bring it as He has just put this in my soul the past week and just been, I I always say, chewing on it and uh, just just, want to be mindful of how the Lord has dealt with our hearts to deliver the message over in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you have your Bibles to follow along, grateful that you are tuned in, thankful for your prayers, thankful for those that are supporting us through your means as well to help us to cover different expenses that we may accrue. But we are very mindful. Uh, one one aspect of the questions uh, said how needful were other people. I said very needful. I can't. I don't do this by myself, and and I'm glad that I have recordings that say that. <laughs> I don't do this by myself. I do this through the help of so many people like you that God, for whatever the reason, has put me and this ministry on your heart. And and that's how we are here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you have your Bible, is going to read two verses of Scripture, verses 6 and 7. And the Bible says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so we want to speak to us this morning about what God has given us. What God has given us. It seems that we are always ready to talk about the things that we don't have. Right, Uh, We can get caught up in that, and and I've been guilty, and I'm sure I may fall prey to it. I'm not above anything. Uh, Amen. But we seem to talk about much more about the things that we don't have, and we begin to give the excuses of maybe why we don't have certain things as far as I don't have the money. Sometimes is your number one excuse or reason why you don't have... uh, Things that you think that you need. Amen. Uh, We also talk about, uh, we lay it to the things that we don't have is because maybe we didn't get the education that we needed. Uh, Maybe we just did not get the opportunity. And sometimes, you know, those are things that you do have to wait on as far as the opportunity part. And then some have even gave excuses of why they don't have It's because they didn't have the right family. You'd be amazed at the different reasons that 
I hear from across the board uh, was telling them I am just as comfortable with the little children and, and putting them piggyback as far as bringing out an object lesson in the church as I am down with my street family in the streets. I am comfortable wherever God places me and I'm thankful for the abilities that He has gave me to be able to talk from all the different age levels and just different places that God has, has put in. And so I can't say, you know, uh, why I don't have because of money or because I didn't have the education because God has gave us plenty of opportunity and I cannot say I didn't come from the right family. I can't blame it on my family for what I don't have in this life. But can I tell us today all that we need is what God has given us through His Son, through His Spirit, and through His Word. That is all that we really need in this life. To know that our soul has been saved, amen, by the blood of Jesus Christ and that we are on our way to heaven. That is the most important thing to obtain. All these other things in life, they do not matter and will not matter when it comes down to your last dying breath. Uh, Whether you have the education or the money or the right family or the opportunity. None of those things will make any sense or be of any big deal when it comes down to your last dying breath. All that is going to matter is did you make the decision to serve Jesus Christ with all of your heart? Because God has gave us everything that we have need of through His Son, His Word, and His Spirit. Amen. Verse 6 went on and said, Wherefore I put you in remembrance. Now it tells us here that there is a gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. He's telling us to stir up a gift. God has gave us the gift of salvation not for us to neglect that gift. God does not give away gifts for them to be neglected and put off to the side. Uh, We're being uh, brought back here to our memory, bringing back to our minds, remembering, begin to stir up We are fanning the flames of our memory that we have been given power through the Spirit of God. Whatever uh, places and circumstances, trials that may come into our life, we have been given the Spirit of God, amen, in our lives to help us to overcome. Jesus said it like this before He left uh, this world and in the book of Acts 1. He said in verse 8, Jesus speaking, He said, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. Hallelujah unto me, both in Jerusalem, into Judea, into Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But ye shall receive power. Jesus speaking here. That we shall receive power through His Spirit, through the Holy Ghost is how He tells us. Now, can I ask this this question? Did Jesus ever tell us anything wrong? No. Did Jesus ever lie to us? Ever? No. You know, uh, He meant what He said. And when He said, ye shall receive power, that's exactly what Jesus meant. Amen? I love it when people say exactly what they mean. I don't have to sit there and cut through the lines and figure out the gray area. I mean, it's black or white. I know exactly what they mean. And Jesus is just like that. He lets us know exactly what He means. He is not about to give us something to neglect. Oh, can we stir up our minds of memory? I tell you what, I tell you, I get this message before y'all do. Uh Woo! I wasn't sitting down for a little while. Can I tell us that? (laughs) Hallelujah. He doesn't give us something for us to neglect it, but we do. We do. We neglect it. Can, Can I roll us back here? Roll back in the pages of your mind. Some of you, it took a while... To pray to be saved. That's true. Huh? Some of you maybe had felt the presence of God and and this, but you didn't feel the conviction, you didn't feel the call. And it might have took, you know, a a while for you to come to know Jesus. You might have had to even pray for a while. You might not have prayed through the first time uh, like like I did. Uh, The first time I ever felt conviction and I went down and I asked Jesus to come into my heart and repented of my sins. That was the first time I had ever said that prayer. But there might have been some that it took a 
few times. Sure. For whatever the reason. Huh? For whatever the reason. Sure. Some of us, it took a while to pray. Some of us, it took a while for us to receive the blessings of God. That's mm-hmm. true. Wow, I walked down that road to be sanctified, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to allow the gifts of the Holy Ghost to be active in my life. I mean, it took a while. It took a good while to pray. There was a lot of tears and a lot of other uh, bodily fluids that are involved when you really get into that agony with God in the altar. Amen? And you're praying and asking God, I I desire this gift, God. I desire more. I desire to build on the foundation. And some of us, you know, we've prayed for years for our loved ones to be saved. True, true, Mom. Come on now, we've got to remember if some of us we prayed a long time for the blessings. We prayed a long time for those lost loved ones sure. to be saved. And some, you know, we've even prayed a while for jobs or for yeah. homes or yes. for other things that we have need That's right. of. That's right. That's huh? That we have need of. And the list can continue, but can I tell us that after a while, yes. after a while we received the blessings of the Lord. We receive salvation. We receive that sanctification or the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the gifts that God that we were seeking of Him. And maybe our loved one got saved and a home came or, or a job was offered unto us and all oh, our prayers had been answered yes. after a while as we were seeking the Lord. Amen. And, and the door was open for us to have the opportunities. And then... We do good for a while. Yep. And then the growing pains start to come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you become a new convert and you're starting to grow in Jesus. Yeah. And I don't know about you. I was like a fish out of water, so to speak, as I was I, as I was metamorphing into this new creature in Christ that He was making me. I was no longer the CJ no. that I used to be. Yes. And things just didn't feel right no more. And, no. and, and my soul desired other Amen. And after a while, you know, the growing pain started in. I wasn't on the mountain all the time. Amen. I had to go in church and I had to pray a little bit longer to feel that spirit of the Lord. Yeah. Huh? Uh, that song just didn't seem to touch me like it used to. And the growing pain start. That's the truth. Mom. The newness for our honeymoon uh-huh. starts to wear off. Amen. Any of us that's been married? Yeah. We're all goo goo eyed in the beginning. Yeah. We're all on the mountain and oh so in love. So we love. But oh when the honeymoon Where ends. Is all? And the marriage really starts to begin. It gets tough. We got some growing pains. We got some things to learn. Amen? Amen. Oh, I'm touching somebody's mind. We need to remember. And you know what happens? We get idle. (laughs) We get idle and then we get ungrateful. Uh, We we spent all them months, maybe even all them years of praying. God answered. And now we're ungrateful. We're ungrateful. Ah. Yes, Woo. Yeah. We are idle and we are ungrateful. Yeah. Sometimes our attitude is worse than when we oh, began true, true, true. towards the job that God blessed us yeah. with. Yeah. You tell me where a perfect job is. Yeah. I tell you, you ain't going to find one. Hey. Every job is going to have its issues. Huh? Yeah, right. Hallelujah. And even for the lost loved one that we prayed all them years, all, years, all we prayed for a while, it yeah. seemed like we are just very resentful towards. Yes, ma'am. Seem like we can't get on the same page. That's right. I see it happen time and time again and I often wonder, God, what is going on? That's because we are not stirring up. True. We are forgetting what it cost us, maybe. <laughs> Amen. Even though it costs Jesus everything. everything. But when we are praying and we are fasting and we are sacrificing wow. for the souls of man and then for whatever the reason when they do come in, we yeah. kind of leave them off by themselves, my true, friend. True, true. That is the time that you need to rally around them. All hell is breaking loose. Hell wants to get them back in the grips. They don't want to be saved. But we pray all those years in glory. Hallelujah. We shout. And then we just leave them alone. Come on now. All them years. Let's go back to our mind. The memory of our flesh. Let us be reminded of what God has already given us. Amen. And He has not given us these types of spirits that we are laying our 
ourselves too when we become ungrateful and we become so idle in those places. But when we find ourselves there, can I tell us we can come back to the Word and we can begin to stir up our memory. We can begin to brush off that attitude that is not godly. That is not of Jesus. And we can get back that fire. It was started down in our souls. Glory to God. For God, the Bible says, has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I ain't lost my mind. I know where I'm going. Hold on. God don't lead you in some places, you know, that you're talking about certain things. No, it's all still in the Word. Listen. He said to give us of the power that is through the Holy Spirit of God, right. which is our ability or our strength to be able to do things. Amen. He said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but I gave you a spirit of power. Amen. That is your ability. That is your strength Amen. to be able to do something. And His Spirit... His Spirit is the one that gives this to us. He also gives us a spirit of love. That's where that lost loved one, that's where that soul, hallelujah, that we pray for for a while. Amen. This is our affection one to another. Amen. We are neglecting this so much. Amen. Because we cannot love until we came to Jesus. I mean, we thought we knew what love was. But when you've been treated like a dog and a doormat and been mudded on and, and just all put down as bad as you could be put down on this side of heaven, nothing like our Lord and Savior. But when you've been put down like that, but you can turn around and give love. Amen. You know what love is then. That, my friend, is love. It's not the worldly love. Because a worldly love will get back at you. It'll want to be vengeful. It'll want to be spiteful. But he said, I've given you a spirit of love. That is my spirit is what God is telling us. That is our affection. And we are neglecting this area. We get caught up in ourself. And then we don't have the sensitivity like we used to to the spirit. Like I said when we went into the church, that song don't seem to move us. I got to pray a little bit longer when the growing pains of our salvation begin to get started and, and things as you, the newness is wearing off and we're starting to grow in Christ and get on the meat and get off of the milk that he's, that he's had for us but we are not sensitive to his spirit much less to the other ones that need the affection and the love we, we should not be praying years and years and years for loved ones and they get saved and then we leave them out to figure it out for themselves but He's given us the spirit of love. He He's given us a spirit. And a spirit is an influence in which governs your soul. That's right. Amen. Governs your decisions. It, right. it steadies you. That spirit. Remember we were... Uh, well, I was probably... Another mess, but when Jesus was speaking to his disciples, when he sent them into Samaria, and Samaria did not receive them, right. and the disciples got mad and they said, Shall we pray fire down on them? You know? And Jesus rebuked them and said, Ye know not what spirit you're of. He's telling us here, This is the spirit I have gave you. Power. Yeah. and love. Amen. <laughs> I gave you the ability and the strength. I have gave you everything you need. I gave you a love that is going to surpass anything you got to go through. Even when that loved one seems like it's not, they're not growing in Jesus like they need to. But that soul, that spirit is being governed by Christ. He tells us here, I've not gave you a spirit of fear. I've not gave you the influence of of being timid or a coward. A spirit is your influence. God said, I didn't give you that kind of spirit to govern you. But I have gave you an influence. I have gave you a spirit of power, which is our strength and ability. I gave you the spirit of love, which is of the affection. And I gave you a spirit of a sound Mind, yes. and when we have a sound mind, we have self control. Huh? Because we are allowing God to guide the directions and the reactions that we give when when it is due for a response. Let me say it that way. Because people, the enemy, will use people to put things out there just to see what you're going to do. 
Sure will, but God has given us. God has given us. One of those questions in the interview was, you know, maybe one of the, the pitfalls or the negative things to the ministry mm-hmm. that, that I could count, or maybe like where I failed in the ministry. And I said early on in the ministry, I, I failed because I looked for the um, affirmation yeah. of other people That's instead right. of God. That's right. Amen. That's right. I, I looked for them to affirm me, uh-huh. Uh-huh. to tell me who and what I was, right. instead of looking to God Amen. to tell me who Amen. and what I was. Amen. His Spirit will teach you that. Amen. His Spirit will help you to have the ability and the strength right. and the love and the, the self control right. when everybody is telling you different, but That's God right. has God. spoken to you. Amen. Woo. Amen. The Spirit, the Amen. influence Amen. of this world. Uh, of this world, they want us to sit around they sure and they want us to think about everything we don't that's have. Right. Right. And that's where we're at. We feel sorry for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We think about everything we don't, don't have, have. Yes. and forget about everything we already have been blessed with. Amen. Amen. That's all and some of those things we prayed a mighty long time we sure to receive. Amen. And now we're idle and ungrateful. <laughs> not using it. Oh, we're not even using it, but we want more Amen. and complaining about what we don't have. Amen. God help us today. But can I tell you that the Lord is helping us today and He is letting us know that we have so much more given to us that you can't even use it up fast enough. No, (laughs) ma'am. You have so much in store just for today. You're not even going to use everything you have need of today. You can't even use it up fast enough. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For when the Word, amen, is made alive in your heart and in your life. Uh The Word. The Bible said that the letter killeth, but the Spirit make Make alive. When this Word is made alive in your heart and life, we are reminded of this. Let me go over to Romans 6 and 23. The Bible said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to focus on the gift of God because that's what we're talking about today. And he tells me here that the gift of God is eternal life. Do we know what eternal is? It is everlasting. It is that there is no end. We are given this gift to where we have no end of a life. If we look at it like that. Sometimes we don't focus on the word eternal. There is no end to eternal. Now granted we can either be uh, forever in heaven or forever in hell. But again, I'm going to be talking about the gift of God because that is where we need to get in line with. Amen. And this gift, the Bible said here, is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Many people want Him as a Savior and they want Him as a friend. So my friend, when He becomes your Lord and He becomes your Savior, Amen. He dictates what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. You will submit to that power, Amen, and allow Him to guide you in everything that He wants you to do through Jesus Christ. And through Him, we receive this power. Amen. We can receive, we have obtained this power, Amen, through Jesus Christ. Amen the Son of God. Power to overcome the I don't have. He's gave us the power to overcome the I don't have. I don't have this, this, and this. And all the excuses of saying why we don't. When in actuality, can I say this to us, have we prayed about it? Uh, have, you, have you even consulted God about it? Amen. Now, early on uh, in my Christian Christian world, this didn't have nothing to do with ministry. This had everything to do with me living for God. Yep. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, uh, don't put me in a place. Don't, don't, don't allow me to make you know, uh, more money than I need to be. You know, I, I am content with getting by. I don't want nothing in my life Amen. to take me away from you. Sure. Amen. Amen. And if a dollar will allow the vainness to come back in my life and will get me to be in a place that I don't need to be. I don't want it. Let me have to struggle then. And I've had to struggle. I've had to do some things. That's been hard. But God has blessed me and He has helped me to get to another place. Amen. But I meant that in my heart. I didn't 
didn't want anything because when salvation came into my life, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And nobody can take it away from me that I don't allow them to. I have to make that decision to walk away. And when He gave me the opportunity to serve Him, hallelujah, I wasn't willing to just let it go on any old thing. Now, oh, we've had to stand the storms and the trials and the tests and the old devil just breathing down in our face just about. But amen, when I began to look at what the eternal gift of God was given unto me, oh, can I tell you, my life on this side of heaven ain't going to be nothing compared to the life that ain't never going to end if I will be faithful to Him. Oh, the power to get over the things that I don't have and embrace the things that you do have. Some, again, you've prayed for a long time to, to be blessed with those things. And I have too. I've been in this place. I prayed for things and God blessed me. And I found out it wasn't worth even having. Amen. That's true. I've been there. God allowed me to see. And there is nothing wrong with being blessed with things. But I'm kind of like this. I ain't wanting to have to pay for something and ain't got no money to do nothing else. That's right. That ain't life. For me, for me, it's not life. That's, I'm talking for CJ. And I've been there. I've had either the vehicle or the house or the thing. And I mean, it just cost so much money. It took everything that you had. You couldn't go nowhere. That ain't no fun. And that's what I'm saying. Be careful. And sometimes the Lord will allow us to have those things to show us. And I'm so glad. I'm sorry. I, you know, I was looking at my little apartment this morning. I said, God, I'm so grateful for my little apartment. I'm so content because, you know, I've got this and I've got these other things. I'm, I'm grateful. If I, if I need anything really, you know, God, you, you provided, I'll be all right. Amen. And if I do want a little something, something, I know that maybe I can get it. You know, so I'd rather be in that realm than be in a place that I'm struggling to keep something. Oh, God, because he, he had so much better for me. Even though in that situation it was hard. It was difficult. And I'm still trying to discern it was probably mostly pride. Uh-huh. Amen. Because everybody would know then. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Again, my life on the other side is going to be a lot longer than it is here. And when it comes down to me taking my last dying breath, yeah. whether I lost a car or a house or whatever, whatever, <laughs> It ain't going to matter when I'm taking my last dying breath. No. No. It ain't going to matter what I did have and what I didn't have. The only thing that's going to matter is knowing that I have Jesus in my heart. we got just a few minutes. Hallelujah. Yes, He gives us the Spirit to change those I don't have to what God has given me. That is His Spirit that He gave us to encourage us, to let us know. We may not be liked of this world, and that's okay. But I gave you the power to overcome. He said, be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. You're going to have tribulation in this world. Like I said in the beginning, did Jesus ever tell us something that wasn't true? No. I'm going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. He's, he's overcame. I can overcome. He's gave me the spirit of His power that I can overcome. I have that spirit. I have the influence to have the ability and the strength and the affection and the self-control that I need because He said, I gave you this spirit. Not the world. God has gave us the spirit. So stir up. There's an action part. If you're like me, I need more action. Yes. I need more action. Yes. My body needs more action. Yep. Yes. <laughs> but the action to stir up the gift of God. And I'm meaning getting to the gym or, you know, doing some sort of exercise is what I'm saying, action. And this, this Bible here is our manual for the spiritual warfare that we are going to encompass. And as I'm closing over in Ephesians, Paul said it like this. He, he said to put on the whole armor of God. That's an action. Put on the whole armor of God. And then he said that we may be able to stand. Verse 12, he said, For we wrestle not against flesh. Wrestle. That's an action word. So I'm to stir it up. I am to put on the armor of God. I am going to be wrestling not against flesh, but against those principalities. And then he said in 13, Take unto you the whole armor of God. Take unto you. 
Amen. To take and put upon you the whole armor. This is what God has given us through yeah. Yeah. His Word. Amen. Everything we need to make our lives witnesses, as we read in Acts 1, where Jesus said, and after that, that the Holy Ghost will come upon you, that yeah. ye may be witnesses of Me and yeah. in Samaria and Judea. He went on to tell us that. So we need to be witnesses for Him. With shoulders, yeah. Remember what God has given us. He has gave you the ability. He's gave you the affection. He's gave you the self-control. Sure and it's all by His Spirit as we read. Not the spirit of fear, but God has gave us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Think about those things. God has given us. Not about what you don't have, but what God has gave us. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Time's come and gone. Amen. Amen.